There's a rose in Bethlehem with a beauty quite divine, perfect in this world of sin. On this silent holy night, there's a fragrance much like hope that it sends upon the wind, reaching out to every soul from a lowly manger's crib. Oh, Rose of Bethlehem, how lovely, pure, and sweet, born to glorify the Father, born to There's a rose in Bethlehem, colored red like mercy's blood. Tis the flower of our faith, tis the blossom of God's love. Though its bloom is fresh with youth, surely what will be he knows. For a tear of morning dew is rolling down the rose. Oh, rose of bed. Born to glorify the Father, born to wear the thorns for me. There's a rose in Bethlehem with a beauty quite divine perfect in this world of sin on this silent holy night oh rose of bethlehem how lovely pure and sweet Born to glorify the Father, born to wear the thorns for me. Thank you, Beth. We appreciate it. Now, if you'll open up your Bibles for our scripture reading this morning, you'll find it there at John fourteen twenty six. John fourteen twenty six, written. I'll be reading from King James. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. May the Lord bless his word.
I like to have fun, even if it's good fun at church. How many here know your Bibles? A couple. Okay. <clears throat> How many believe Jesus was born? Quite a few. Have you ever been to a birthday party? Is that what Christmas is supposed to be? Is it? When you go to a birthday party, what's on the cake? Candles. Very good. And when you get over 20, rather than have a forest fire, <clears throat> you can go by candle numbers. And you can put 3 O on it and light the 3 and light the O and now you're 30. How many candles would be on Jesus' cake this year? No, this is Jesus that was born, Zebedee. Okay. Since his birth till now, since you know he was born, I got this because Mary Ann said in her opening remarks at Sabbath school, well, we know when he was born, don't we? How many candles or what number candles would you put on his cake? 2,000 2,000 2,023 When was he born? 4 B.C. What's the B.C. stand for? So he was born four years before the Christ. Does that make sense? Does anything the world does make sense? <laughs> Why 4 B.C.? When was he baptized? What year? In all our evangelism, we say 27 A.D. And how old was he? 30. So was he born in the B.C.s? Yes. I just want you to realize that you need to know where to go to prove what you believe. You believe in Christ's birth? Mary Ann remarked, Well, we know when he was born, but most don't know when he was born. In fact, why would Christ be born before Christ? Because we've always made a mistake in years and everything. And not to take away from my sermon, I won't. Because <laughs> uh, I might hear about it. We want to talk to you today. How many were here when I preached last? Did I preach about the ten virgins? I want to use that again, but not make it my main point in my sermon. But I want to share some things with you to get you to realize that at Christmas, is it a time to receive gifts? Yes, it is. Does God want to give you a gift? Do you know the biblical gift he wants to give you? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So how many Advents are there? I want to share something with you now that Marianne started me. <clears throat> I went with Sarah when she played at the Methodist Church last week. I don't know if I want this on my recording or not, but the pastor said the neatest thing and if he listens to this, maybe he will hear what he said. He said there's four weeks of Advent. Is that true? No, but do they celebrate that? But I want to finish it. He said it for me. He said there's four weeks of Advent for Adventists. Why would he use our name? Because he's thinking of Adventists being ready for the Advent. Is that right? So it was a neat saying right in the beginning of his sermon, and I enjoyed the daylights out of it. Let me ask you, how many Advents are there? Two. One has gone by, right? Over 2,000 years ago. 
Should it be the one we're looking forward to, or should we be looking forward to the second Advent? But what are we going to celebrate in a couple weeks? The first Advent. Are we ready for the second Advent? Were there people not ready for his birth? Were there people, his own, not ready for his death? What is yet to come in his ministry? Is there a judgment going on? Are you living like there's a judgment going on? Could the judgment end any time? Well, Pastor, there's things that have to be prophetically done before it can happen. Is that true? But could it happen fast? When you see it start happening, is that the time to get ready? No. Are you ready now for the judgment to end? Because shortly after that, Jesus will come. So I just want you to see that as we get near Christmas time, and people are thinking of the first advent, how many are thinking about the second advent? And if they weren't ready for the first advent, how many will be ready for the second advent? And my real question today is, if you believe it, are you living like you believe it? We need to get our lives in order to be ready for the second advent of Jesus. So which advent is important for you today? <clears throat> the first has come and gone, and we don't really know the specific date. Those in 4 BC were not ready for the first advent, and we don't know the date for the second advent. But are we ready, and what will it take to be ready? His last sermon was about the ten virgins, the wise were using the extra vessel and had the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> he helps them to understand their Bible better. Therefore, it is necessary to have the Holy Spirit in order to be ready when Jesus comes. Jesus told Israel that they did not know the scriptures. So let's turn in our Bibles to Mark chapter 12, verse 24. Mark chapter 12, verse 24. 24. So Mark 12, 24 reads, And Jesus answering said unto them, Do you not therefore err, because you know not the scriptures, neither the power of God? The disciples thought they knew the scriptures. But let us turn to John, the book of John, um, chapter 1. And we're going to read verses 40 through 45. So John 1, verse 40. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah which is, being interpreted, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee, and findeth Philip, saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Peter findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So did these people quote scripture? Yes. Did they believe Jesus was the Messiah? When he hung on the cross, did they give up on him? Yes. Why? Because they only knew some of the scripture. Are you safe knowing only some of the Scripture? No. You need to know what's in the book. 
And yet at the death of Jesus, we see them questioning if he was the true Messiah. Some did not believe in his birth, and some did not believe in his death. How about you? Do you believe in his birth? Do you believe in his death? What's left of his ministry for us? It's just the closing of the judgment and the second advent. Are you living like you believe this doctrine? Can we err not knowing the scriptures? Can I ask the question I was going to ask before? On date setting, do you know what month Jesus died on? Anyone? Anyone? You know your Bible. Passover. What month was the Passover? I'm not asking for the name of the month. What, num- what month was it? You will celebrate the Passover on the 14th day of the first month. You will celebrate on the 14th day of the first month. When do we celebrate? When do the Jews celebrate it in our calendar? April. So have we changed the months of the Bible? Yes. We've changed the day as far as worship. We've changed dates. We've changed a lot of things. We've changed the time of day. When's the day start? Midnight. Biblically, Paul says evening. Have we changed it to midnight? Yes, we have. Is 12 o'clock the middle of the night? No. It's not even the midnight. (laughs) So what have we done? We've messed with the Bible, the Word of God, and therefore everything is off. So if he, if we, they celebrated Passover in April, what month did he die? April. Is that right? We don't know what month he was born. We've got that all goofed up. But do we know when he died? He was celebrating the Passover, turned it into the first communion service that he wanted, and then he died. So we do know. Is that not interesting? The more you know your Bible, the more you'll find out you know more than you think you know. When I asked what month he died, everybody thought, where in the world's pastor going? But was he celebrating the Passover? Do we know the month that the Jews celebrated it? Yes. So do we know the month he died? Yes. But we don't have any idea the month he was born. There's an October, and I've heard somebody else trying to prove that it was in the spring. So we're still not sure. But we need to know the important parts of our Bible. We were told, if we go back uh, to the sermon that he preached on the vessels, that the virgins all had extra vessels, but only the wise virgins had oil in their extra vessel. So is there a difference between owning the vessel and using it? The wise were using theirs. They were allowing the Holy Spirit to teach them, and that is why he was given to us to increase our Bible knowledge. If we go back to John 14, 26, our opening text, if you want to go there. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. We want to remind you about the gift that Jesus promised to give many years ago, and it's the Holy Spirit. So who leads us to Jesus, and who convicts us of sin? And who convicts us to be baptized? And who is trying right now to reach out to you? Will you be ready 
for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? We need to turn to the Old Testament, to Hosea chapter 6. Hosea is by the book of Daniel. Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. And it reads, Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain, unto the earth. So is it happening already? Is the Holy Spirit working? What brought you into the Adventist church? Even if you were born in the Adventist church, then you have to wonder what brought your parents or your grandparents. And it always comes up, the Holy Spirit. One time I was disappointed, let down, because a lady joined our church in Clinton, Iowa. She came in and sat next to me during a set of meetings. And I said to her, which was a crazy thing for me to say, what brought you here? And her answer was, whatever brought you here. Is that a good answer? That's a beautiful answer. So she joined the church. And somebody came from uh, one of the uh, places that does our, our uh, magazines every month. And they wanted to interview her. And they interviewed her during potluck. And I sat next to her. And the guy asked the same question question. He, her name was Rose. He said, Rose, <clears throat> who brought you into the church? Now I want you to see me. I'm sitting next to her and I hear the question. Who brought you into the church? <laughs> I'm ready. What was I ready for? Her to use my name. And you know what her answer was? The Holy Spirit. And I'm glad that that happened. It taught me a lesson. Do we bring anybody into the church? If they walk through these doors and they like the way we worship, do we bring them into the church? Who brought them to walk through the doors? The Holy Spirit. If they stay and they get baptized, who did that? The Holy Spirit. We try to take credit that is not ours. And I'm thankful that that happened at a potluck with that lady because I had witnessed to her I had sold her books she read the book she came to meetings I was ready to hear my name did I have any right to hear my name no because we brothers and sisters when we say well I brought so and so into the church we're taking away the blessings of the Holy Spirit we do not talk about the Holy Spirit enough so we were told in the book of Revelation that the last day church will have the testimony of Jesus. Is this what the Holy Spirit will use in the last days to get us ready? He used the gift of tongues the first time. Will he use the spirit of prophecy the second time? That's what happened with the wise virgins just before the bridegroom came. And I don't want you to miss this. You all agreed with me. Is the oil the Holy Spirit? Where did they get the Holy Spirit to relight their Bibles? Out of the extra vessels. And I don't want you to miss this, and I don't want to over-exaggerate it, but it just came to my mind. It's very unique. Just before Jesus came, in fact, was the call out that he was coming? Yes. And when they relit their Bibles, did he come right then? Yes, the bridegroom came. And they were allowed, because they relit their Bibles, they were allowed to go in with him. But I want you to see the fact that it was in my mind. When they realized that their vessel was empty and they had the extra vessel, they poured. Are you with me? They poured out the oil into the first vessel. Is there going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Does it fit this story that Jesus told? In its own way, it does. Because they had that vessel, they could refill their Bible and be ready for the bridegroom, Jesus, 
to come. So I just want you to think about the things that Jesus uses in parables. The fact that how, how uh, exact they may be. That we could actually say because they had the Holy Spirit in the extra vessels, they could relight their Bibles and right then be ready for Jesus to come. There's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the last days. Will you be ready? And do you want to receive a gift from Jesus? If we turn to Luke 11, verse 13. Luke 11, verse 13. It reads, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Now you hear this in this verse? What gift does the Father want to give to his sons and daughters? The Holy Spirit. This text tells you the gift that God is desiring to give to you. If we as parents can give gifts to our kids, how much more your father, brothers and sisters, wants to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. In the devotional book, You Shall Receive Power, page 308, we have a quote that we'd like to read. It says, This subject, the Holy Spirit, has been set aside, as if it sometime in the future would be given to its consideration. Other blessings and privileges have been presented before the people until a desire has been awakened in the church for the attainment of the blessing promised of God. But the impression concerning the Holy Spirit has been that this gift is not for the church now, but that at some time in the future it would be necessary for the church to receive it. But this promised blessing, if claimed by faith, would bring all other blessings in its train, and it is to be given liberally to the people of God. From Acts of the Apostles, page 55, there's another quote, and it reads, But near the close of earth's harvest, a special bestowal of spiritual grace is promised to prepare the church for the coming of the Son of Man. This outpouring of the Spirit is likened to the falling of the latter rain, and it is for this added power that Christians are to send their petitions to the Lord of the harvest in the time of the latter rain. And in response, the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain. He will cause to come down the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain. But unless the members of God's church today have a living connection with the source of all spiritual growth, they will not be ready for the time of reaping. Unless they keep their lamps trimmed and burning, they will fail of receiving added grace in times of special need. Unless you keep your lamps trimmed and burning, where are you going to get the oil? Out of the extra vessel. You need to keep your Bible filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you're lacking in your Bible knowledge, you need to find more knowledge in the second vessel and pour it into your Bible and understand the life of Christ, the plan of salvation, the gospel message. You need to know it better and better each day. So are you asking him for this gift? In honor of the first advent, we ask for many gifts. The second advent is about to take place, and how many of us are asking for the gift of the Holy Spirit. The five wise virgins were ready when they poured out the Holy Spirit into their Bibles. The foolish virgins had the Bibles, but they had no Holy Spirit. Jesus was telling the Israelites that they had the Scripture, but did not have the Holy Spirit. So do you have the Holy Spirit? And at this time of year, why not ask the Father, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
And our text is Luke 11, 13. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Why don't we have the Holy Spirit? Give me a Bible text. You do not have because you do not ask. How many here, be serious with yourself, ask yourself, am I? How many here are praying for more of the Holy Spirit? If you pray for Him to enter your heart and use you, I hope you're ready for self to be knocked out. You won't be thinking about what you want to do today. You want to know what the Spirit wants you to do today. Does that make sense? Yes. So you seriously need to ask yourself, am I ready for the Holy Spirit? There's going to be people working in the last days. And I missed my cue. I need to know what it is. Anyhow, there's three groups of people in the church. Happening. There's going to be three groups of people in the church. I want you to hear this and ask yourself, which group am I? There's the group of people that make things happen. Are you with me? There's people in the church that see things happening. And there's people in the church that wonder what's happening. Don't miss this. There's the workers. They're making things happen. There's those in the church that are aware that there's things happening, but they're just watching them happen. And then there's members in the church in the last days that are going to wonder what's happening. Brothers and sisters, when the Holy Spirit is poured out and you're one of those that have asked to receive it, will your life change? Will others in the church see your life changing? And there will be others in the church that are wondering what you're up to. Is that true? When Peter and them received the, the gift of tongues, and they came out and preached in about 13 languages. Were there 3,000 people ready for baptism? So there were people coming out of the upper room that were wanting to make things happen. There was 3,000 that saw it happening in their own life. And there was a group there that were wondering if these men were drunk because they didn't understand what was happening. Brothers and sisters, you and I may go through that in the last days. And you are either going to be making things happen, seeing things happen, or wonder what in the world's happening. Where's the safest place to be? Making things happen. Ask God what He wants you to do in these last days. Do you believe we're in the last days? Do you see it in the weather? Do you see it in the governments? Do you see it in the religions? Are you ready for it? You need the Holy Spirit poured out so you understand your Bible like never before and you want to make things happen. May God bless you. Shall we all stand for our closing song? Hover o'er me, Holy Spirit.
sings praise was that your prayer today do you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit a man once came to Jesus and says what must I do to be saved Jesus says how readest thou he only went through the last six commandments the first one that says let nothing fall between you and God it was his money and he said, what more must I do? And Jesus says, go sell all that you have. Give it to the poor. Come follow me. If the Holy Spirit moved upon you like that, would you walk away sorrowfully? Or would you follow Jesus? Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for all that's written in the scriptures. And Lord, as Mary Ann read today, there were texts where the Disciples were thrilled they found the Messiah. And yet when you came to the end of your ministry here on earth, they were disappointed. They thought they were wrong. They weren't sure what you were doing hanging on that cross. But if they knew the whole Bible, they would have seen that your hands and your feet would be pierced and that you would die as the Lamb of God so that you could do away with the sins of the world. Help us to know our Bible, not some of it, Lord, but enough of it or all of it so that we are ready when you come. We just help that you hope that you will help us to be a worker in the church, both in the walls and outside, in order to save or see saved as many people as we can see. Lord, we aren't the ones to save, so help my prayer to be right. We are the ones to go out and preach and see the Holy Spirit work in their life. Help us, Lord, to do our part so that it opens up your doors to do more of your part. We thank you for this. We ask your blessings upon us today. Help us to think often of the Holy Spirit because the Father is willing and waiting to pour him out to each and every one of us. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Dismiss us, Lord.